What is up all you GBA type people? This is Tom. I'm here bringing you guys my week 2 team builder for Necrostevo and the Victorian Shadows. This is our second match against Necrostevo since he joined last year taking over for my beloved friend uh, Cooper the Turtle. And last season our matchups did go very very well. Uh, I believe I did win in my streak to get into the playoffs. But this season, his team is much different. The The one thing that I noticed is uh, <clears throat> he drafted a team that he is comfortable with, that he knows how to use, that he it's a team that he would typically draft himself. And, um, you know, that's, that's super important, you know, the fact that he comes to the GBA, takes over for a team, does as well as he could, and then ends up taking a team uh, of his own. So his team this season is uh, Tyranitar, Togekiss, Halucha, Delmize, uh, Mega Alakazam, Araquanid, Rotom Heat, Diggersby, uh, Lycanroc Sun, uh, Lycanroc Day, whatever. Sun is just differentiate between, um, you know, the day form and dusk form. Uh, Alone Executor and Fortress. His team will be showing up right here on the right side. Looking at his team, Lander's T is really good here just because with uh, general coverage and even something like Rocky MZ, I can knock out things like uh, Rotom Heat, uh, Toa Kiss, even, you know, I can pivot off of uh, Fortress, stuff like that. And um, that opens the doorways for things like Scissor, as well as things like uh, like Swellow as well. He really doesn't also like uh, Swellow, especially because I could pivot off of uh, Tyranitar. I could pivot away from Fortress. If I'm a special set, I can go for uh, Heat Wave. Uh, but the really big problem mons on this uh, on this roster, I, I consider Mega Alakazam, just because it's very fast. Uh, I know, or I suspect at least, I think that he'll be running some sort of subset because it, it's the best case scenario in case I have Sucker Punch and I bring Mega Hound Doom. Um, I think Araquanid gives me a hard time because it's uh, just if he runs like a Choice Bandit set, if he runs like a really offensive set with a you know, water bubble liquidation, you know, there's not much on my team that really wants to take that, so to say. So we could get some really good dents in, uh, against my team. Same goes for Diggersby. You know, Adamant Life Orb. Uh, even if he's Jolly Life Orb, if he has Agility, you know, uh, Return, Earthquake, you know, Elemental Punches, all of which can uh, heavily dent my team. Alone Executor for Zemon. Uh, nothing on my team besides Deance really wants to take a Devastating Drake. And since he is a Grass type, he could also go for something like if he has, you know, Z Grassium or... If he has, if he just has Giga Drain or even Energy Ball, you know, is really not going to appreciate that type of hit. But overall, looking at his team, I do suspect uh, Toa Kiss or Rotom Heat for the likes of Scizor. I suspect Mega Alakazam solely because it is his fastest mon. I also, I also see something like Diggersby, maybe Lycanroc, maybe Tyranitar. He does need rocks in some nature. Uh, Diggersby is going to be really hard to, uh, give me a really hard time. Same with Araquanid, same with uh, Lolan Executor. His team's not super fast, but is super threatening. And then if he brings Hall Lucha, I expect some sort of um, you know Power Herb set, perhaps a um, you know Citrus Berry set, uh, something that could take advantage of the Unburden, which also may give me a hard time if I don't prep for it correctly. So we're gonna go into my team. Uh, my now one thing I'm gonna express is that if you guys were around last season, when I take on my divisional opponents the first time around, I don't really express a lot of the specifics about my team solely because if Amon doesn't come, if Amon doesn't do what it, what it's supposed to do, I could bring it for the second match. So that's what I'm gonna be doing here. Anything I don't explain didn't get shown in the match. Um, and any sort of like in-depth uh, EV sets, I don't really like explaining until our second match when I know that you know they can't see what I what I'm thinking. And if any guys have a problem with that, uh, tough shit. I'm that's the way that I work best, and uh, I like to keep some sort of secrecy. Whereas other coaches just kind of let it all fly out uh, after their first match with a divisional opponent. So my first mod is going to be Landorus T. He's going to be rocking a uh, Rockium. Z, so uh, I am going to be carrying Stone Edge, also be carrying Earthquake, and um, it's going to be, you know, extremely offensive. He's going to be able to take advantage of a lot of his mons because one of his only, his only rock resist for that matter is Diggersby. <clears throat> uh, I did contemplate flying the MZ, but Rockium just kind of uh, ensures that he doesn't really have a switch in because, uh, you know, Road of Heat could come in on, on a, a Z fly, um, whereas, you know, Rocky MZ Continental Crush is just going to, you know, crush whatever type of uh, thing that may resist uh, the Z fly. But besides that, it's also going to be bulky enough to take on things like Hall Lucha, Diggersby, uh, if the case is needed to do so. Next up, we have Rotom Wash. This Rotom here is going to be really nice just because it has both a Volt Switch and Hydro Pump. <clears throat> and both those moves really do threaten Steve-O. 
Uh, he doesn't have all too many things that want to take all of those moves. Uh, Hydro does hit things like Tyranitar, does hit Lycanroc, it does hit does hit Rotom. You know, super effectively. Volt Switch, I can pretty much pivot out on almost anything except... Well, except Diggersby. But if something like Delmise comes in, something like a Raconid comes in to take that water move, I can just pivot right out. And I do have things that uh, don't mind uh, the attacks that Delmise goes for. Raconid, a little more of a problem. But if I Volt Switch out, it, of course, maintains momentum in my favor. And if I know he's going to bring in something to try and resist that water move, I can go for you know, Volt Switch. And, of course, like I said, maintain momentum, keep the matchups in my favor. Uh, besides that, I am going to be running Protect. This is specifically for scouting purposes. So this allows me to stall at Sand Turns. It allows me to stall at Trick Room in case he puts it on uh, a lone Exeggutor. It allows me to... Uh, see what type of move certain mons have. It allows me to see if I'm something, if it's choiced, if I can see what it locks itself into, and then switch out accordingly. Um, it allows me to per maybe dodge a high jump kick from the uh, the Hall Lucha. And then, of course, I'm going to be running Defog because this is going to be one of my only Defoggers coming this week. But Defog is also necessary because it does, you know, get rid of the likes of uh, Sticky Web from Raquinid as well as Hazard Stack or just Hazard in general that my team doesn't really overall uh, appreciate. Next up we have uh, Komo'o. This mon was not shown whatsoever. It was brought. That's it. You'll see it if it comes next time. Next up is Scissor. Uh, this only showed two moves, BP and U-Turn, but this was a bulky Roost set. Uh, this was this had a lot of investment into its bulk to ensure that I pretty much could live, you know, many many hits that I could uh, take a, different fire moves. This is this was running an Akaberry to ensure that I could live, you know, HP fires from things like uh, Fortress, from things like Miguel Kazam, live a fire punch from Diggersby, and um, you know, it just ensured that I can live a lot of different fire moves. It could roost up, stay healthy, and it was a late game overall game win con once things like Togekiss or Rotom Heat were knocked out. Next up we have, and this was a very fun set to use, and you'll see it, Scarf, Swallow. Only two moves that were shown were U-Turn and Boom Burst, uh, but this was for, like I said initially, the sub Mega Alakazam, because I expected he'd run sub on, on Mega Alakazam for Sucker Punch uh, Mega Hound Doom. So this was kind of in the case that he, if ha Mega Hound Doom was brought, if he was ever put into a situation where he does get behind a sub, he thinks he's safe. If he's at 75%, this Swallow could knock it out behind the, uh, the sub and KO it through the sub, uh, I believe it's 75%. Now even with Komo'o being brought this week, uh, it's not running soundproof. I didn't want Mega Alakazam to potentially get the soundproof from Komo'o and then Swellow would be useless against it. So this is my primary check to the fastest thing on his team. And Scarf does allow for a lot of possibilities. And it's it's different. And I, I like it. Like I said, only showing Boom Burst and U-Turn. But I, I can guarantee you this thing was uh, very, very threatening in the long game. Uh, just because it ensured that it pressured a lot of his team. And there wasn't all that much that really wanted to take on Swellow. Especially with it, it being like modest, scrappy. Uh, Delmize couldn't come in on it. Uh, once you know, certain things were weakened, uh, if it went for Boom Burst, it could just knock things out. It could uh, weaken things down like Tyranitar. Could you turn out on that? Uh, overall, just a very, very good mon for this week and very fast. Which uh, Swallow is becoming one of like my sneaky favorite mons that I've had in these first two weeks. Next up, we have our final mon being Deancey. This is going to be just you know a typical wall, uh, very bulky on both sides. It is gonna going to be fast-ish based on you know a lot of his slower mons. I just want to be able to outspeed certain things. Not gonna explain what but, or my investment. This did show uh, Diamond Storm. Pretty much all of its moves. Uh, it is running double stab, uh, Diamond Storm, Moon Blast, Protect again for scouting and for leftovers recovery because Rotom and DNC are running leftovers. I want to be able to get you know easy uh, easy leftovers back. I want to be able to stall some turns if I need to, and I want to see exactly what my opponent is running. And then finally, Stealth Rock, because Stealth Rock is super important this week to uh, chip down things like Araquanid, Rotom Heat, uh, Togekiss, things like uh, they call Lucha, and force things to, you know, you have to get rid of those rocks, whether it's Togekiss, whether it's Fortress, uh, things of that, of that nature. I am running the, you know, like two walls, Rotom and Deancey. I'm running, I'm running one choice user in Swallow, and then, of course, you know, Z-Lando and Bulky Scissor, and then Kamo'o. 
So this team this week is super fun. I am very excited to use it. I'm sure you guys are excited for the match. It'll be coming out uh, tomorrow at, I haven't decided what time yet. I will talk with Steve-O and we will coordinate. But I hope you guys look forward to the match. Sorry if this was a little bit vague. Um, I will go into specifics next time I play Steve-O, which I believe is like week 9 or 10. But until then, for the specifics, see the match tomorrow. I know you guys will enjoy it. I'm certainly looking forward to it. And uh, until then, let's go Sharpedos. It's crunch time.